This video is made for adult collectors because expensive toy. Oh, look, it's Steve Trevor. <coughs> I'm not doing that ever again. Fans Toys figures are very weird to me. They're clunky and squeaky and very, very expensive. So I don't usually buy them. I have messed with a few, mainly Thomas, Outback, Soundwave. I've held Blaster and this, Sea Spray. Fans Toys has a tendency to engineer things in a very complex way, sometimes too complex than it needs to be. But this, it's very, very simple for a Fans Toys product. And it's also just a nice small handful of toy, which surprised me greatly. This was sent to me by TF Safari. Um, Time to do the spiel. They have a wide range of third party and knockoff stuff with the occasional official toy from Haztac on there. And their prices are pretty great in comparison to a lot of the other shops. And their shipping's real cheap. They have this guy for 99, but it's on sale right now for 84 at the time of writing this, which I think is a pretty good price for this. They have multiple other items for sale and obligatory shot of combiner I want. And if you use code that toy guy special 3% off, Yes, I know. You save an extra couple dollars off. So thanks for sponsoring today's video and now back onto the actual toy. It looks great for starters. I put the toy head on mine, but it still it still looks awesome. Sea Spray is one of my favorite G1 designs. So having this guy is great. The yellow legs with the little circles, the blue arms, the white chunky torso. The colors just work so well. He's just so clean, but not boring. And it's those colors that really help it not feel boring. He feels super dense too. There is die cast in this guy in the feet, in the leg joints, and I believe in the torso. It's kind of hard to tell, but he feels nice and weighty for his size. And it makes the whole thing feel premium and hefty in your hand, especially for how small he is. However, one thing I don't like is the feel of the plastic, or is it all painted? It's hard to tell, but it feels painted because of the texture. And that's concerning because the whole thing can be susceptible to paint chipping. And I have actually, chipped a little bit of it. There's a part in the video during the transformation where I'm trying to show you how to properly pull a panel out and my finger slips and I chip a little bit of the paint. That's that's great. He does come with an alt head, which is the one I have on the toy right now. And it's the one I like the most, but both heads are very similar. And I honestly don't really see that much of a difference other than some shaping and one has eyes, but he does also come with two pistols that he can hold and go pew pew. But I don't know how bullets and lasers are going to work underwater, but okay then. He's a nice size though, like it's small, but the little head handle thing makes him a lot nicer overall. He also scales pretty well with modern um, generations deluxes. So if you have some of the mini bots like Braun who just released, Huffer, Pipes, Bumblebee, Beachcomber, you can put him there and he kind of works. He's not as greebly as a generations toy, but size wise he works. So Sea Spray's posing is fine, like it's, it's again standard, but is fans toys so there's some fans toys flair to it and fans toys flair is not a good thing at least this type of flair so the head can rotate and it can look up and down just a little bit not a lot if you want it to look down even further you can move the whole shelf that his head's attached to but here comes the fans toys flare squeaky joints uh, shoulders can do a full 360. They can go in and out on creaky, squeaky joints. You got elbow bend, 90 degrees, bicep swivel, wrist rotation, though it gets blocked by these hinges. They seem to do that a lot. They seem to end up blocking joints because hinges, because they don't design it properly. Like this idiot's head. I don't understand it. Uh, the hands can open and close as well. Ah, get those squeaky arms out of the way. You do have a waist joint. Which again, well, first of all, that's what it sounds like. And it's blocked by this hinge. However, you can move this up a little bit to get more waist movement, which is, at least that's good, but I don't like that sound. Hip skirt does move up to accommodate the leg, which ratchets forward that far, back that far. They can go out that far. You have a 90 degree bend at the knee. On another ratchet, there's also a thigh rotation though. Because of how it's sculpted, doesn't rotate in that far, um, but it does go out. And then you have down, you have up, and you have ankle tilt. And you've noticed these are, yeah. So 
he's got die cast in him. I believe there's some die cast in the torso, but I could be wrong. The hips and knees are die cast. You can see the silver joints down there. I pointed at my, my viewfinder and not the toy. I'm an idiot. But the feet also have die cast in them. And as you can see, they like to droop a lot. It's very annoying, especially when you pick it up and the foot just like, you get, you get them in this really cool pose on the desk. I'm like, okay, I want to now put them on the shelf, pick them up as fecal. They do that. It's really, really, really annoying. And again, this sticker means nothing because <laughs> otherwise this wouldn't happen and squeaky joints wouldn't happen. So one thing I think Fans Toys does a lot, which they need to stop doing, is they think tight joints equals good. And that's not always the case because you can have a joint, right? That is, we'll bring this guy in as an example. That is tight enough that it works, but not tight enough that it feels like it's going to break, right? Like I can move this, no problem, it feels fine. But it's not loose, like it's, it's not falling. But on their toys, they think that the tightest you can go is the best you can get, and so you get You get stuff like that, that makes that awful noise that is basically just a plastic grinding on itself until eventually if you keep moving this, it will get loose. And then there goes that QC out the window. So please stop doing that fans toys. Please stop making these things feel too tight. Like they're going to break. Like I don't want to transform. Like this was me trying to transform this and then giving up because everything got stuck because the joints are too tight. Stop it. It's annoying. Also, Another thing fans toys needs to stop doing, stop putting your toys in styrofoam. Have you ever heard of this little thing? It's called the environment. We're trying to save it. Stop making your packages out of styrofoam. It's 2023, people use re recycled foams now or plastic trays. I would rather any of that over styrofoam. That and styrofoam makes a mess. So robot, it's actually quite nice, like really nice. Now let's get to the fun bit, transforming it. So like I said earlier, he's not complicated. Like this was a little too complex for its own good. Soundwave is definitely too complex for its own good. And then Thomas, the other one that I've actually messed with the transformation, I did not enjoy that at all. So this, I was very surprised. It's extremely, extremely simple. Like, okay, that's another part of like tight, too tight is bad. That, that, that felt terrible. But the rest of this is so pleasingly simple. And it feels like if and when we get a legacy one, this is sort of how it would work. It, it feels very generations-y in its engineering, which is not a bad thing. That's a very good thing. I love the generation stuff. So this just works super well. These are what's die cast, by the way, in the feet. Just get that all that situated there like so. And then just do the same on the other side. Oh, okay. Um, that happened. It's on a ball joint. It goes back on. But what the hell? <laughs> that's that's a first. There we go. Also, the ball joints I just noticed are die cast. Don't know why they're die cast, but okay. I guess that's a thing that you want to do. I don't know. Just peg the legs together. Like, so. See, these pegs are painted too. And so like, ah. Getting that all clipped together is a tiny bit annoying. And then this part's really, this part's pretty genius. The way they get the backpack around, you just pull, rotate, get that out of the way, rotate, push down. There we go. And then you just sort of clip this in like that, bring the arms down, peg them onto the sides like so, to sort of get all this pegged together, bring this section down to lock the arms into place with the feet. Now these pegs don't really reach that well. So getting it all put together can be a bit of a faff at first until you figure out the way you're supposed to do it, which is push these in and then tab the sides into place. And then you just bring these panels in and peg them in like that. Now going back to robot mode, you want to pull these from the, that's some paint that just came off. Pull this from the back here up like that, and it comes out. 
Otherwise, you might snap the peg, so just be careful. Ah, see, that, that's, that's coming undone. That's not fun. Bring this down, fold this up, and there you go. You have Sea Spray in his hovercraft mode. And that wasn't so bad, right? That was pretty easy. And it was really fun. Minus a couple of the tabbing issues here, but now that I learned how to do them. This is one sick assault mode. It's a flat object, but all the mass is evened out and it feels superb to hold. It feels, it doesn't have this, but it feels like it has 50-50 weight distribution across the entire alt mode. It doesn't do much. It does roll super well and the propellers spin, but the majority alt mode just sits there. You can store the guns on the side, but they do like to fall off from time to time. I do like though how when you close the panels around it, it tries to hold it in place. It just doesn't do a good enough job. But it's, I love the hovercraft alt mode. I've always loved it. And so having this nice and chunky, but not super large one in front of me is very, very nice. It reminds me a little bit of the Hunt for the Decepticons one and how dense it feels when it's all packed together like this. And I just love that feeling. It might seem like a boring toy on the surface because it really doesn't do much, but man, is it just so much fun to handle and mess with? Is it worth the full 100? Eh, maybe not. But the 84 it's on right now, I'd say yes, that's a pretty good deal. So I would definitely recommend picking it up on sale. And again, if you use my code, I think you save like three extra dollars or something like that. So it doesn't hurt. But that's my look at Fans Toys Sea Spray. I almost said Hunt for the Decepticons. That is not this toy. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye bye.